Okay, we are now um, going to look at the role of retail media um, in our future media model. Um, I'm going to welcome up to the stage uh, Sam Tidmarsh from Ad Wanted Events, and he's going to be talking with David McDiarmid. Hi, David. How are you? I'm good, Sam. How are you? Yeah, I'm not too bad. I'm not too bad. So we're, going to, so we're going to be talking about the role of retail media in your um, future media model. That today. is what I've been told, yes. Okay, cool. Um, we're on the same page then. Um, can you, can you tell, tell me a little about um, yourself first. How did, you, how did you get to this seat today of the future of media? Uh, apart from that invite from you so kindly a few weeks back. Okay, yep, yep. Um, and the offer. I'm of great. Uh, attending uh, on top of this no expense spared stage uh, here. Yep. So uh, my name's David, I uh, work at uh, Beam Suntory. We are a global spirits brand. Uh, if you're not familiar with, with us, we own uh, part of Suntory, a range of Japanese whiskies, Jim Beam, Sip Smith and so on. Um, I sit in a newly created global media team, uh, the function of which part of is to uh, develop a, a new media model. Um, uh, to kind of accelerate the, the transformation of the business. Prior to that, I was working at publicists, so interesting to hear some of the publicist people. We also work a lot with publicists um, as well, so, yeah. So I, I know you and you and Jerry have been talking a lot about championing media as, as high quality as your own liquid, mm -hmm. and um, you've, you've called that liquid and loop. Mm -hmm. So to tell me a little bit about liquid and loop and what you've both been working on over at Beam Suntory. What, what's, the, what's the mission with that? So we love a sort of category adjacent analogy. So liquid referring to, uh, you know, the quality of our liquids. So we want to be building uh, media inf infrastructures and buying our media in a way that is as quality as the liquids that we produce. And the looped element of that is around how we create that virtuous cycle of Intel um, and data to fuel better understanding of our consumers and how we buy our media. And um, uh, tell me a bit more about this future media model that's part of the liquid and looped yeah. uh, mission. So historically, people have always bought our products. They just buy them. There's not been a big need to do a lot of paid advertising, but the business continues to, to scale and to accelerate, which is exciting, a lot more liquid coming online. And to facilitate that growth, uh, we are developing uh, a media model to assist in that growth, but also to help accelerate the transformation of the business. We're a complicated portfolio organization with multiple brands ranging from $10 to $500,000 operating across multiple markets. So we are setting up uh, a team in order to deliver on that from a media perspective, um, whilst trying to manage the fact that we want to scale and accelerate set against the backdrop of uh, markets that are very different and, and products that are very different. So we are uh, rolling out um, a sort of more hybrid way of doing that with experts internally and also reshaping our engagement with our agencies and partners to better deliver on that. I'm still waiting on that £500,000 bottle of uh, it's whiskey. It's actually my bag over there. Right, so okay, I'll, uh, I'll just pop so, over that and get that for you. That was meant to be delivered last week <laughs> as my payment. But okay, um, and, and what role do you see retail media as playing in this? in this vision that you have? Yeah, well, we sell whiskey. So uh, retail and media are very, very important to us. So the reality is historically, most of, uh, most of our consumers are enjoying our products on premises or at home. Uh, the real definition of a walled garden, as it were, the literal physical walls in those places. Um, and, uh, but the reality is um, we are pivoting more into uh, D2C and, and commerce related offerings. We're much more present now on retail, uh, retail kind of media sites. And we need to be in those places, be it to sell directly to consumers. So a number of our brands have uh, a direct offering and we're seeking to grow that. Or just off the basis of the fact that seeing our products in those environments inevitably leads to sales. So for us, uh, it's massively important that we continue to kind of grow in and pivot and figure out how we can best use those uh, environments to scale um, our products. A lot of it is net new for us as an organization as well. A lot of these kind of commerce and D2C offerings that we've got are very new and which for a kind of um, more old school organization represent kind of quite a radical change. So, so in the media mix supermarket, you've obviously got your whiskies yeah. as you're walking around. Um, you're chucking out TV, you're chucking it out of home and you're just putting in retail media. Uh, there's a bit more strategy behind it than that, Sam. No, like, I mean, yeah, the, the, rea the reality is uh, we are making it a bigger part of what we're doing. 
um, and identifying where it is best to play a role. Um, so for brands where we do have that more direct and D2C offering, it's very, very much part and parcel of what we're doing. And we're not seeking to like, you know, borrow from Peter to pay Paul in terms of that investment. We consider that net new investment and places where you want to go. Right. Trying, what's well, always trying to kind of, um, you know, be more effective with with kind of what we're doing. So, so you're not shifting budgets out of other channels and putting it in retail media. No, I mean we're always looking to be more effective with our media, yeah. um, and so, you know. Uh, scrutiny across everything is massively important so we want to be more effective but we're not just about cutting costs for the sake of it we want to we want to grow the business as a whole and we recognize that investment is needed to to, to do that yeah um, i'm going to be coming to the audience for questions so get your thinking caps on and um whack your hands up if you do have one and i'll try to get to you as soon as possible i wanted to you, you're obviously a digital expert um, you built your career around digital. Apparently. Yeah, right. <laughs> I think we're going to find out if there's anyone asking any questions. You, meant, you meant to say yes. <laughs> yes, I am. Um, so come to David if you need any uh, digital support. Um, t tell us a little bit more about um, the closed loop attribution of retail media. Why that's important to you. Are you, are you able to um, optimize campaigns a little better than, than other media? So uh, sort of taking a step back, so I mentioned earlier around uh, bricks and mortar people enjoying our products in bars and restaurants and going to buy in the supermarket, which is an ecosystem where we have very, very limited data on what is influencing kind of those sales and so on and so forth. So uh, for us to be operating in ecosystems where, you know, we can have a view on consumer behavior, what people are looking at, clicking through to and all of those things is hugely important to us. That is data that lots of people in the business, some of whom have been in the business for 40 odd years, have never had, a, had the ability to access before. So it's hugely important. And I know there's the, the industry says, oh, you know, wall garden's terrible. And we, for, for us, we're like, that's better than nothing. You know, that's something that's actionable and that we can kind of work towards. So yeah, to be able to have that data and make uh, better decisions on it is, is massively important. Um, uh, we do view that alongside everything else. You know, digital's a, a smaller part of kind of what we do. So yeah, having come from a state where you know, we're kind of reliant on perhaps what a bartender recommends or a POS in a supermarket to actually be able to put some tangible numbers on things uh, is great. And um, it's certainly something that our CFO is increasingly interested in. <laughs> and um, are you using that data to inform um, uh, your how your strategy in other channels? Is it, is it, is it feeding through into um, TV, for example? Uh, yeah, good question. No, we're horribly siloed and we don't talk to each other. No, the, the reality is that's why my, my team has been created and why we're standing up this media model because the great thing about uh, the ecosystem uh, in which most of us are kind of operating is that it's not only the, the, the data that you're looking at, it's all of the intent and other rich consumer behaviours that sit behind it which we can infer things from. So we're increasingly taking that intel around maybe what some people are searching for or the change in those searches on an e-retail site, for example, to say, right, we need to be thinking actually a bit differently about the creative ideation for assets that might differ in different environments. You know, people are now looking at, I always use this example, and it is a real one, people are looking for peanut butter bourbon, right? If that's a trend nice. and we can see that over here, I'm not saying we reacted on this, but, but this was a trend. If we can see that over there, then right, we need to have a conversation around what we're doing over here with that, because that is, there's no greater expression of intent than what people are putting into a website, right? So we're definitely kind of on that journey. We've got a way to go with it, but that is what we're kind of pushing towards, yeah. That's not what's in the 500,000 pound That bottle, is definitely is not what's in that 500,000 pound okay, bottle of whiskey. Good. Has, has anybody got any, any questions at this point? I've got a few more. Okay, we've got one from Our Steve. friends from Publicis. <laughs> Steve Ricketts from Publicis up front. Thank you. Th thank you for that. So my, my question is quite an easy one, hopefully. What's the best use of retail media that you've seen, either for your brand or somebody else's? Aside from just selling lots of whiskey, uh, for us, oh God, that's a diff that is a quite quite a challenging one to kind of um, answer in terms of uh, a top of the head. I think when we kind of think about it, the the kind of the the areas that we look at that represent success are the ones where um, we've intimately tied together what we're trying to do in terms of just selling those bottles here on a D 2 C perspective or on an, on a on a e retail site. And where that 
completely matches up full funnel with everything that's happening for that brand. So we have brand platforms that you know exist, uh, you know, kind of often globally. And when we when we're able to, or when brands are able to tell that brand narr narrative up here but then are also able to tell and execute that in their e-retail environments and other environments that are at the bottom of the funnel and also on-premises, because that's a big part of what we do. Um, that, for me, is really special because you're not only focused on the kind of selling the whiskey, but you're building that long-term brand alongside that as well. And often we struggle to do both things at the same time. So not a specific example, but a broader view of you know, how we like to sort of think about it being successful, yeah. Great. Have we got yeah one from Pedro Ramos, head of e-commerce? Very at handy that these chairs. Have our media group. Hi. Uh, one of the things is during the morning everyone was talking about like the funnel, typical funnel. But from what I'm understanding with you, there is a broken funnel. Like you guys work like more in connecting everything yeah. together. Uh, what is your view on that? On on the funnel itself? So the funnel doesn't exist. It's the first thing to say. So it's not actually, it's a thing, isn't it? it, it I think we all recognize we've sort of created this view to help us simplify the world in which we kind of live and execute. Um, for us, uh, it's not a broken funnel. What it is, in fact, is that it just reaches out often much further beyond the ecosystem in which lots of people in this room tend to think, which is either digital or maybe a bit of TV. But let's be honest, the analog signal for TV was turned off years ago. That is still all digital. So for us, we have to constantly think about uh, those kind of like offline, in-bar and on-prem touch points. So um, yeah, I, I think it's a useful construct. For us, we have this extra layer of complexity uh, around the funnel because um, our, a lot of our uh, products are consumed kind of live and we kind of need to think about that. And for, for us, when we think about all these you know, issues around walled gardens and all of this kind of stuff, like we tend not to worry too much about them because Actually, we're used to operating in environments where, like, it's much more harder to kind of kind of track what you're doing. I hope that's a useful perspective. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've got another question here. Another Would you one. mind just letting us know your name? And yeah. Hi, uh, my name's Nimi. Um, so basically, um, so I hope the half a million pound bottle didn't have the uh, peanut butter bourbon. In Definitely it. not. <laughs> and I can <laughs> confirm. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but one of the questions I've got is, with the diversification of markets, because I've recently come from um, a drinks industry research yeah. company, and obviously they were saying one of the biggest growing markets is India. Uh, yeah. So, uh, which obviously, uh, considering it has some dry states, it's basically got speakeasies left, right, and yeah. centre. So, where you've got new markets like that, how are you almost... Because the data you'll be getting from there is yeah. going to be completely different and all sorts of funnels that you'll be having from America yeah. and you it's, Jessica Spence doing whatever she's doing. It's a great point and, and question. So uh, for those that don't know, uh, India is a huge whiskey market. We can't do any paid advertising in India. We've got people there that do you know, media and marketing and so on and so forth. So yeah, it's very, very challenging in those environments. And so for markets like that, we're often looking to it's kind of almost where that kind of in-bar and on-prem experience kind of plays a much bigger role. So what we're seeking to do from a sort of media or digital or Intel perspective is how can we glean consumer insight around behavior and then translate that to an activation which is much more grounded like to push people into bar. So rather than doing paid media, it might be around, well, how do we optimize all of our Google My Business pages so that everyone can find the bars that are selling our products? and kind of tying it into those kind of activities. What you, you've got to be very cute and nimble and agile, which is part of the reason why we want to create this media model that is kind of acceleration and, and, and agility focused is to, is to tackle some of those challenges. And interestingly, from a European perspective, there's lots of markets in Europe where it's getting harder and harder to um, advertise in restricted categories. Spain, for example, you can only advertise at like 3 a.m. till 5 a.m. or something like that, you know, in the morning on TV. So. Uh, no quick fix, but we seek to bring what we know over here and, and, and have applications for what is possible within those markets. I hope that was useful. Yeah. Have, have we got any, any audience questions? No. Um, I've got one myself. Is there anything in the retail um, media ecosystem you'd like to see improved at the moment? Improve <laughs> all of it. Um, I know. I, I mean, I, I, I think the, the one, the one thing that I think that kind of like continuously, kind of keeps cropping up. That's important. Is 
uh, that, that access to kind of data is increasingly useful. And I think a word of caution where we talk a lot about consolidation and particularly network agencies kind of beginning to pile in and buy ecosystems, Citrus ads and so on and so forth. There's a lot of benefit in doing that. I think for lots of advertisers, there's also a lot of caution around having all eggs in one basket as well. And I think there's a sort of balance there to kind of be struck as well. Um, yeah. We're one, one final question from me. We're about to head into a panel um, about whether um, everything can be a media network. Oh, yeah. is, is Beam Suntory going to be a media network? I think we're best placed sticking what we're good at, which is barreling delicious liquids. Uh, I think my team, though, will continue to press to build better ways of doing media globally alongside that. Brilliant. Please put your hands together for David Mike. Thank you, kindly.